Brooklyn Independent Television. And, uh, Joe, personally, to rewrite the entire script. I hope you don't mind. No, I got no problem with that. Okay. All right. <laughs> no, but I mean, let's let's try to do it. I want, and I tell you what, we we come out of here and. Uh, scenes have to be rewritten. If we can rewrite them here, all the better. But if not, it's, you don't get the latitude to write this scene, write the scene that you need to write by next Monday. That's not the way it works. You, if you were on a television show, you would be writing that scene immediately. Because we need it. We, we got to get on the stage and shoot this thing. We would be doing one episode, like three, uh, three or four weeks straight, an episode a week, a week of hiatus or two weeks of hiatus, and then we're back and we're ready to shoot another episode. And that's the way it goes. Uh, that's the way it goes in the real world. So I've been uh, a writer for a few years now and I've written, produced and directed a number of different things, short films, um, a couple of web series. I was a point in my, in my life, in my career, where I was looking for something that would sort of um, enhance what I was doing and sort of bring me to the next level of professionalism. Yeah. So that's, where I want, that's how I wound up here. Yeah. I was working at, at the PBS affiliate in New Jersey. I think I saw an ad in one of the newspapers, like the Brooklyn paper or something like that, for this program mm -hmm. and decided to check it out. I was done with Hollywood. And not done with writing, but done with Hollywood. I really had a good time teaching. I wanted to teach. And a friend of mine, uh, a producer named David Picker, I called him because he knows everybody. And I said, David, I want to teach. And he said, you know, there's a guy. He was looking for somebody just like you, and he's the president of LIU. I moved to New York uh, so I could uh, go to grad school and kind of pursue comedy at the same time. And um, uh, Norman, I, I learned about this program and about Norman when he came to uh, speak at Dartmouth where I was going to undergraduate and that's how I kind of found out about this. This is actually the only uh, grad school program I applied to. I wasn't planning to go to grad school. I wasn't looking at any other graduate programs really, um, but I saw an ad for it on Facebook and I saw the video online. After graduating college about four years ago, I came to New York to work in film, started a film career, and I've been working in mostly indie, very low production. It took two years to get this, to get this uh, program certified, and it is the only one in America that promises what we promise, which is basically going to put you in the trenches as if you were in a television show. So what's the... I think, it? I think it's more a condensing of this top part and okay. then and possibly an, an ad line at the end. Uh, and, and adjusting that Abe character? Yeah. Well, that's, that's just a takeout. Like, I, I mean, think we can come back to it later. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so Tony's office with Lewis. Um, we talked about maybe tweaking the line every note is about us um, and having her look at the program and see that the title of the, his piece is My Antonia. Um, was there any other notes on that? Mm -hmm. Okay. Bernie's Barge, we were discussing this, this possibly big, working as a group. A this is a big one. Yeah. <clears throat> um, as it stands right now, we're kind of, we've reached the point where we kind of don't know what the point of this scene is anymore. Mm -hmm. um, other than kind of what, what Making I'm, it seem like Joe's an alcoholic. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It is two years, 48 credits, and uh, I would like them to all graduate and get a chance to, to be a working writer. And we do everything. We do uh, hair and makeup, uh, casting, um, in, you know, everything you would do in a pre-production mode. Mm -hmm. And, we ca and we, then we shoot it, and then we go into post-production. And then after the post-production, we're going to try to sell this thing. And we're going to shoot it uh, about this time next year. Take a, a week, and this one is called Red Hook.
Red Hook is an hour-long family drama um, that focuses around uh, the family, the Russo family. It's about a family in transition and the main character is Joe Russo. He's the head of that family. It's a story about growing up and the fact that, that growing up really doesn't stop at any particular age because, uh, because it's every, every character in our story is going through a change. It's an ensemble story that takes place in a particular place and the place itself becomes a character and is the thing that affects all of the ensemble characters. The main character, Joe, who's kind of coping with the fact that now he's no longer a firefighter, as he's been for several decades, he has to, uh, you know, deal with the reality of his own family that he's kind of, you know, used his career as a refuge from. He's dealing with his community's changing, his family's changing, his life is changing, you know. His son is debating going to college or pursuing a career in comedy. Um, his brother's a musician who has a tumultuous relationship with his ex-wife. Joe jo and the community are both at like a pivotal point. They're, 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 they've been one thing and now they're becoming something else. And so I think you know, his personal odyssey is the, the odyssey of also the neighborhood. So we have a character that is um, a developer and he has all these big plans for Red Hook and how will those development plans sort of change the neighborhood mm -hmm. um, is kind of the direction that we're going in right now, so. Two kind of nuclear beats, uh, nuclear in the sense of the nucleus of the scene. The two, the two nuclear beats of this scene seem to be establishing kind of the, the friendship dynamic between Bernie and Joe and just establishing that Bernie is kind of the Studs Terkel of Red Hook, that he's kind of, he's got his fingers in a lot of pies, like that Al Pacino movie. Um, so yeah. I arrived there because he's escaping the house. Yeah. Right. So, so we establish so, so that Bernie's a confidant, you know. Those three things are sort of there. <laughs> well, the pros to working collaboratively is that you have this amazing reservoir for all these ideas, right? Uh, you know, well beyond the ideas that you'd get f come up with by yourself, you have like a pool of people who are constantly pitching ideas, uh, and a g good variety of them are great. And the, the, the drawback, the con to that is that you can't use every idea. You want to use decorum with people, but you also need to think about what's best for the script. Might behoove us to try like reconsidering the action of the scene, yeah, right. like make it more active. Mm -hmm. You know, maybe maybe Bernie's in the middle of doing something and Joe has to help him or you know, just trying to come up with something a little more to the scene besides just a conversation, I'm would not it, sure. Would it be tasteless if Bernie was trying to get one of the Liberty Holding signs and he just yeah. couldn't reach it? Because Something he's like in that, a, maybe? A wheelchair? Um, Perhaps. What if he has one of those like Walmart extendo claws things for like grabbing <laughs> stuff off of high, high shelves? <laughs> I, think, I think the real um, crux of this program that Norman has stressed is the collaborative aspect. And just the fact that that's something that you're probably least prepared for if you're if you're in a program where it's just you know you kind of go to classes and you just kind of go home and do your own homework and do individualized um, you know assignments and stuff you do, you don't learn the process of just dealing with other people. We're all come from I think come from backgrounds where we've worked as individuals and so now working together and team writing is different and I think it's different from pretty much any other type of writing out there. With one other person it's very interesting dynamic but when you bring it out to 22 people it becomes even more uh, interesting to say the least uh, but it's great it's a great program I feel like uh, every day I walk on this lot I'm walking into my future. And if we sell it to a network or a cable outlet I will keep all the money. <laughs> no, LIU owns this, and we're going to be um, uh, uh, we're going to be presenting this to the network next uh, next fall. Uh, uh, no, I, well, not next fall, next spring. So once you've shot the once we've shot it, yeah, and we're going to shoot it uh, about this time next year. Take a, a week, and this one is called Red Hook, uh, and it's. Place, takes place in Red Hook in Brooklyn, and the, the, the program is Brooklyn centric. Download this program's podcast on iTunes, keywords Brooklyn Independent Television.